right, welcome back to First Local uh, here at our one o'clock show. It's Tuesday, October the 6th. Thank you very much for joining us. We're waiting for Doug Ford's afternoon press conference from Queen's Park. Today he will be joined by Christine Elliott, the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, as well as Dr. David Williams, who's the Minister, sorry, the uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health, and also Matthew Anderson, who is the President and CEO of Ontario Health. Um, also, just before we go to the weather, uh, make sure you go to the website. Uh, last week we had a story about uh, the Civic Plaza downtown duplicating another rink that's already being built and will be open this winter with tax dollars. The follow-up for there, you can see it now, it is entitled Civic Plaza on Thin Ice Follow-Up. Mayor Provenzano and councillors attempt to explain away duplicate ice rinks. You can see the responses there. Go to Sue Online to check that out. And now we're going to head over to Weather Daniel. What's going on, buddy? Hi, Weather Daniel here with your On TV Weather Minute for this Tuesday, October the 6th. We're going to look right at our camera now, and you're going to see a mix of sun and cloud today. For most of the day, our camera is brought to you by wirelesscom.ca. Make sure you check their website out for all their services. Overnight, we will see things dip down to 11 degrees with some showers. And getting into your Wednesday and Thursday, you're looking at a mix of sun and cloud with some lingering showers on those days. High of 15 on Friday, maybe a thunderstorm on Friday. And Saturday and Sunday, look at this, Saturday, 17 degrees. Enjoy that because we're back to rain by Tuesday with a high of 15. Overnight lows are in the double digits for a couple of nights there and staying in the high single digits. Thank you to Northern Lights Detailing, and this has been your On TV Weather Minute. Have a great day. Thank you very much, Weather Daniel. Thank you for joining us here on First Local. Okay, a poll came out today about Halloween. Now, obviously, trick-or-treating, you have the kids going door to door and the respondents are pretty much split. So people who let their kids go trick-or-treating last year, 52% say they won't let their kid go trick-or-treating this year and 48% say they will. Now, where it gets really interesting is who will be giving out candy? 49% of the respondents said they will not be opening their door to give out candy, which means 51%, you'll still be able to get candy from them. So it's basically split on both and whether or not Parents are going to let their kids go trick-or-treating and whether or not people will be giving out candy as well. Also, that in the poll, they talked about Thanksgiving this coming weekend and 40% of people who were polled uh, said that the pandemic is causing them to change their plans and an equal percentage also said, nope, we're doing the same thing and 20% said, nah, I don't know yet. As for the Christmas holidays, 49% of people said that they will change their plans and 44% said they won't change their plans for Christmas. So we're pretty split in this country on whether or not we're gonna let our kids go door to door trick or treating, whether or not we we'll spend Thanksgiving or Christmas with our families. Interesting to note, most parents go trick or treating every day when they go to the drive through at Tim Hortons and McDonald's and other places, it's the same thing. Uh, so I wonder if those parents who won't let their kids go trick or treating are going to get their double doubles each day from Tim Hortons with their donut. Okay, on to COVID-19 numbers today. Good news is the modeling that they said where we'd be like at a thousand cases at this point, um, we're only at 548. So the good news is we are at least well below the, where the modeling was being suggested by the provincial government this past week. Uh, 548 new cases, that's down from 615 the day before. Uh, seven people passed away from the coronavirus in Ontario in the last 24 hours. Now, continuing the trend that we've seen uh, for quite a few weeks now is the majority of the cases are in the greater Toronto area. Uh, 201 new cases in Toronto, 90 in Peel, 62 are out in Ottawa, and then also 56 in New York region. 61% of the cases are in people under the age of 40. Uh, this means our rolling seven day average right now is 611, and we have a testing backlog of about 55,500 uh, tests. And we have now completed 4.1 million tests across the province of Ontario. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with Doug Ford in just a moment. Since I've seen Joe, we were a couple of pranksters, and Joe was always full of surprises. But today, he's the one in for a surprise. The thing is, Joe doesn't live here anymore. 
For people living with dementia, getting lost can happen unexpectedly. Are you ready to help? Help people living with dementia live safely in our communities. Contact your local Alzheimer's Society and visit findingyourwayontario.ca. back to First Local at 1 p.m. for Tuesday, October the 6th. Thank you very much for joining us. We're waiting for Doug Ford's press conference, which will be coming to you from Queens Park in just a moment. While we wait for Doug Ford to come out, uh, we're going to tell you about a couple of things coming up. Uh, tomorrow night, the Chippewa County Commission has their candidate forum. It's at 7 p.m. Sorry, it's October 7th at 8 p.m. And it's all the candidates who are running for the county commission. Uh, they are also having another one uh, for the... Uh, Michigan's 107th House District, and that event is on Thursday, October the 15th at 7 p.m. We'll be carrying both those here at uh, Sewell Line and on TV. The Sioux Theatre Project on the Michigan side has opened their fall group uh, registration. You can go to our website and then you can see the uh, full details there for the fall registration for the Sioux Theatre Group, and you can also click through to their site. And Doug Ford is coming up to the podium, so we're going to head over to Queen's Park. Brightest minds driving Ontario's robust COVID-19 testing strategy. We have thousands of laboratory staff, hospital staff, pharmacy workers, all working together, all making great sacrifices to build an extremely robust testing system. Today, we should all be proud of the fact that Ontario has completed over 4 million COVID-19 tests. More tests than all the provinces combined across the, the entire country. That's 4 million tests delivered through our 150 assessment centers, 77 pharmacies, long-term care homes, pop-up and mobile testing units right across the province. Last Friday, we announced updated measures to help our testing centers prepare for the colder months and build capacity for the second wave. Thanks to those measures, we have eliminated the long lineups. Folks who need it can now get a test by appointment. And this gives people certainty when it comes to testing. By working around the clock, we've also been able to reduce the testing backlog by 40% since last week. We now have 77 pharmacies offering testing. And this number will continue to grow. We're going to continue to invest in testing. We invested an additional $7.7 billion in healthcare during the first wave. We've gone from 4,000 tests in early April to over 40,000 tests a day over the last week. And now we're investing another $1.3 billion for testing and contact tracing through the COVID-19 fall preparedness plan. That's 710 million to expand our lab capacity, reduce backlogs, and build our testing capacity to 50,000 a day and beyond. In fact, we hit a new daily record high for testing yesterday with over 42,000 tests completed. And there's another $360 million to expand capacity in our assessment centers. My friends, this is the largest, most comprehensive COVID-19 testing plan in the entire country. And the new rapid test will be an absolute game changer. We also need everyone to download the COVID Alert app. Over 3 million Canadians have already downloaded it, which is incredible, but we can do better. It's the easiest thing you can do right now to protect yourself and help our frontline heroes. And my friends, we have to thank all the laboratory staff, the nurses, the pharmacists, the doctors, the PSWs, and everyone on the front lines. Everyone who is working around the clock to get us through this. By working together, we will get through this. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it to Minister Elliott. Thank you, Premier, and good afternoon. Ontario has established a strong foundation for testing and case and contact management that allowed us to rapidly identify and contain any outbreaks. When we first started testing back in late March, our province conducted 4,000 tests per day. 
By working with our partners, we are now well on our way to increase testing capacity to process 50,000 daily tests by mid-October and 68,000 daily by mid-November. And last week, the province hit a new milestone and completed over 4 million COVID-19 tests since the beginning of the pandemic. This is more tests than all of the other provinces combined. Our broad range approach to testing has helped us determine if and where COVID-19 was spreading. What we found was that it wasn't circulating widely in every community. This was an important learning that helped us make the informed decision to target our resources to those experiencing symptoms to protect the most vulnerable and support outbreak investigations. We continue to look at ways to provide patients with timely access to testing and results, especially as we enter into the cold and flu season. That's why we are investing $1.3 billion to enhance and expand efforts to test, trace, and isolate new cases of COVID-19 as part of our fall preparedness plan. As part of this funding, $1.07 billion will expand laboratory capacity, reduce testing backlogs, support existing assessment centers, and increase testing locations and capacity. To provide Ontarians with more access to testing and reduce testing wait times, the province expanded testing sites to participating pharmacies, with more to join in the coming weeks. To provide certainty to patients as to when they can receive a test during the cold winter months, many assessment centers across the province have introduced online booking for Ontarians to book appointments faster and at their own convenience. This will complement telephone booking that continues to be available where used. Ontario continues to expand testing options that can be used by a range of healthcare professionals. We are working with the federal government to access the recently approved Abbott ID Now point of care test to increase options for testing and support our pandemic response. As the Premier mentioned, we are also continuing to urge our federal partners to distribute these rapid tests as soon as possible. Testing is critical in helping to identify cases and stop the spread as we work to avoid a severe second wave. But again, ultimately, the best way to protect one another is the same advice we've been following since this outbreak began. Maintain physical distancing, wash your hands thoroughly, wear a face covering when you have to go out and please stay home when you aren't feeling well. We are truly living in unprecedented times, but by following these simple guidelines, we can protect one another and beat COVID-19. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to the phone line for questions. First Actually, question. Ivana, be, before we go to the test, I have to uh, give a shout out to my good pal, uh, Premier Dennis King from PEI. Folks, they, they sent over, when I called out for help, we had the Premiers call me and, and, and uh, Premier King uh, spoke to yesterday and he said, Doug, we're, we're sending you 2,000 kits, which equals 8,000 tests. Now, this is a province with 157,000 people, helping a province of 14.5 uh, million people. I just want to tell the people from PEI, I absolutely love you folks. And I promise you one thing, when we get through this, I'm going to be out to PEI and, and thank you because I also remember at the beginning of this, you sent a whole tractor trailer full of meals to Ontario. And th th this is what I mean about showing the great uh, Canadian spirit and working together, sticking together. And uh, not, not only uh, Premier King called, Premier McNeil from Nova Scotia, Premier Fury from uh, Newfoundland Labrador, and uh, of course, uh, my good pal, uh, Blaine Higgs from New Brunswick. You he, he just gotta, he gotta love these coasters. They're the type of people, you know, in a crisis, you knock on their door without even knowing them. They'd invite you in, you'd be sitting there having dinner with them and they'd give their shirts off their back. So uh, Premier King and to all the folks at PEI, I love you. I will be there and we're gonna have the best Ford Fest barbecue PEI has ever seen when I, when I get out there and uh, just this is just amazing. I'm getting chills talking about this. This is uh, incredible. So thank you. Thank you so much. And the people from Ontario, thank you as well. Okay, we'll go to the phone line. First question. Your first question comes from Graham Richardson with CTV News Ottawa. Please go ahead. Hi, Graham. 
Hi, Premier. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, you've seen um, the Prime Minister, and I, I'm not sure if you've been asked this, but also Mr. Trump. Have you been tested for COVID? I have. I've been tested, I think, three or four times. I had set up appointment, I think it was last week. I, I don't know if you remember, but there was someone in our our circle down here at Queen's Park that tested uh, positive for COVID, and uh, I went and got a, a test. Okay. Yesterday you talked about the positive things that were happening in schools. Mm -hmm. We're hearing a lot from our audience about confusion overall about what parents should do. It's okay to go to a club as long as there's 99 people there until midnight or until 11, whatever the rule is, but don't go visit your grandparents. Uh, stay with your family, but you can go out for dinner for as long as there's only six people. What do you say to people who are just flat out confused okay. and they don't know what to do and they're trying to do the right thing and yep. they're very, very worried about where Ontario is going because it feels like mm -hmm. uh, things are getting worse and it's not working. We hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll be very frank. I'm hearing the total opposite. We're flattening the curve. We're putting the pro, uh, protocols in. And, and I'm just going to compare restaurants to going over and seeing your loved ones. And this is going to be about as clear as I can be for, for Thanksgiving. You know, what we're asking, try to say, uh, stay within the, the family. If you're going over, and I understand there's a lot of single people out there. If they have a family they're, they're close to, please wear a mask, keep social distance. And uh, regarding restaurants, that's like apples and bananas. When you go into a restaurant, they're taking everyone's name. Uh, you have six at a table. They have dividers. They, they have protocols in place. And the rest of the people in the restaurant, uh, you don't know. That's the difference. At a family, you, you know the people. Please, it's very simple. There's rules and there's guidelines. The rules are very clear. 10 indoors, 25 outdoors. I would really, really discourage people from having 25 people, even if it's outdoors. Uh, stick with, within 10 people. And folks, we're, we went through so much together. We can get through this. This is going to make or break it this Thanksgiving. We see the numbers slowly flattening. They still are high, but I've seen a decline uh, yesterday. The, the testing is up to 42,000, a record. And, and I, I, I don't know how Matt Anderson does it. I, I, I know I've said he's a champion, but he is a champion. Uh, you know, he, he's moving forward with a record number. We're going to increase the, the numbers, even with the, uh, the struggles that we've had with getting, uh, getting the lab technicians and getting the reagent. Um, but he, he's, he's pulled a rabbit out of his hat somehow. Uh, the guy's, the guy's unbelievable. So he's going to continue doing that and we're, we will get through this. Um, and Thanksgiving is kind of make or break it. Just please hang in there. You know, I, I, I have a, a big family and I, I, I told uh, Carla, I, I said, you know, and she knows, uh, we have no more than 10 and uh, simple as that. And, and that's what we're going to obey by as, as well. And, and when it comes to having everyone over, your aunts and uncles, you know, hang off on the hugging and the kissing and everything else. Uh, I just want to make through it the, the Thanksgiving here, but we're, we see a little bit of the flattening uh, right now, but we need to bring the, the numbers down still. So that's about as, as clear as I can be uh, on, on that. So there shouldn't, shouldn't be any, any confusion. Next question. Your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hi there, Premier. I was wondering, you know, I was on the, the um, websites for various hospitals today, Premier, and trying to book an appointment at assessment centers. And it's almost impossible to get a booking for an appointment to go and get tested uh, either today or tomorrow and down, down the line. So what do you say to people who maybe they're not standing outside for six, eight hours waiting in line, but they still can't? get tested easily at this point in time. Yeah, sure. Good good question as usual, Cynthia. Before I pass it to Matt Anderson, uh, we're just asking people if you don't have symptoms, you know, please don't don't go there. And I gave the example, those great little hockey players showed up, you know, they're they're great. But just imagine two hockey teams full in uniform showing up for no other reason but they want to get tested. Or someone's going away, they want to get tested. If you aren't showing symptoms, please 
And even in saying all that, even with the, the, the lab testing, and by the way, we brought the numbers down by 40%, which is huge over the next few days, so I want to thank the people. And uh, we're still breaking a record. With all this going on, Matt Anderson, we're still breaking a record at 42,000 people, over 4 million tests. I, I, again, I don't know how he does it. It's, it's amazing. So I'm going to call uh, Matt up. Thank you. Thank you, Premier, and uh, thank you, Cynthia, for the question. And, and just to clarify, Matt Anderson doesn't do it. Um, it is uh, a whole uh, crew of people all across this province uh, with uh, particularly uh, our, our lab team that does it. Uh, the Premier calls me and I'm the face of it, but uh, both the Premier know and I know that it's uh, a, a huge team effort all across this province of amazing people who are working incredibly hard uh, to deliver on those timeframes. Uh, with respect to your question, Cynthia, I think what I'll do is maybe back up a little bit and, and repeat a little bit from um, our health minister uh, back on Friday as we talked about the shift from walk-in uh, to uh, appointment only uh, moving forward. Uh, first off, the key thing here is about safety. Um, and the health minister was very clear on this point, um, and this is something that she speaks to me about regularly, is ensuring the safety of everyone and having people who have both symptoms and uh, not symptoms uh, outside uh, as the weather gets worse, not a safe environment. Um, and so strong encouragement from our health minister to ensure a safe environment for everyone, particularly when they're going to uh, get tested. Uh, in terms of being able to access a test, um, we'll work with the hospitals. Uh, certainly in Toronto was our biggest shift. Um, many of the jurisdictions outside of Toronto uh, were already um, largely or on their way to uh, doing appointment-based testing. Um, so we'll, we'll work with our hospitals. And we'll talk a little bit about that for a moment in that one of the big goals that we have as well um, secondary to, to uh, safety for sure, but a goal nonetheless uh, is to make sure that we are providing enough testing capacity in the right places. Um, and one of our challenges when we think about uh, the walk-in scenario that we had before is that if a, if a hospital or an assessment center was to increase their testing um, on that day and we didn't know about it, um, then you could see a few hundred or maybe even a few thousand more tests uh, going down to uh, a lab, uh, that lab not knowing that those tests were coming, um, and then having to shift those tests to a different lab. Um, in that kind of model, uh, from a turnaround time perspective, you, we could lose a day or even two days trying to move those uh, tests around. Uh, in the model that we have now of appointment-based testing, uh, we can be a lot more deliberate uh, if there are hospitals and assessment centers out there who are seeing that their uh, uh, wait time for specimen collection uh, is uh, extending out into multiple days, we can work with them to proactively identify how many more spots do we need, and most importantly, when we bring those spots online, where are those tests going to go um, so we can actually get the benefit coming out the other side. One, one other quick comment that I'll make, Cynthia, and sorry for the long answer. Um, also, uh, one of our goals is to improve turnaround time. So not so much uh, when, uh, you know, the time to get your specimen collected, but more importantly, when are you getting the result? Uh, and uh, part of what we're looking at here through a more deliberate approach to testing is uh, our, our model before, as recently as last week, you would stand in line for, uh, a, unfortunately, a long period of time. You may or may not get tested at the end of that. You may get a card that says you need to come back. And then when you do, uh, we would have multiple days of turnaround time, sometimes five, six, seven days of turnaround time. Uh, our goal here is to be more deliberate. If you do, are waiting up front a little bit longer to get the specimen collection, but are we gaining the time on the other side, trying to get that turnaround time down so you're getting that result faster. That's our goal in the back end. Of course, the front end, as our health minister said, is about safety and convenience for people. Thank you. Follow up. Thank you. And Premier, my next question is for you. Uh, yesterday, the Associate Medical Officer of Health said she recommended people stick only to their immediate family for Thanksgiving dinner. You just a few minutes ago said uh, stick to the limit of 10 people. That is mixed messaging, is it not? Um, and, and it's confusing people out there. So which one is it? Because, you know, I, I, I live in a small home with under 10, but uh, you're saying I could have 10. If you play, but, yeah, so, well, sorry, Cynthia, but if you... Only the people I live with. So if you, you play it back, I said stick within your household. Your, your household, that, that's what I said, so... Um, that, that's what I, I believe in. Let's, guys, let's just get through this. I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Yaffe, but the, the message is clear. Stay within your household. 
uh, when possible. And I say when possible, if you have one person lives by themselves and they have a, have a small social group that they've been with, that, that they can't be left alone. But again, stick within your household. That's what I'm saying. Thanks very much. Uh, the bottom line is COVID is spread person to person. So what you should do is think about every interaction you have with any other person and minimize interactions with people you don't know. And if you're not sure you can maintain the six foot or two meter distance, you should wear a mask. So that's the principle in every measure. Um, so for Thanksgiving, uh, we are recommending that you limit it this year to your household. And if your household is just one person, that person can join another household. So my example, I have a son who lives alone. He'll be very embarrassed I'm mentioning this. <laughs> and he will be joining us. Um, but, you know, that is to maintain some uh, mental and social well-being for people. But uh, yes, 10 is the max for indoors, but that doesn't mean you should go to 10. We are hoping people will stay with their household. And that is the best thing to do for this year for Thanksgiving. Next question. Your next question comes from Haley Cooper with News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Hi, Haley. Thank you. Hi, Premier. We wanted to ask you, yesterday you gave an impassioned response, and again today during question period, about restaurant and bar owners who likely wouldn't survive a second shutdown. And you spoke about the bad actors flouting the rules and that it's not the entire sector. So if that's the case, why not implement a kind of secret shopper plan of action on these places and crack down with huge fines? Uh, because when the pandemic hit, you set up that yeah. snitch line for price gougers, and that seemed to work. So why not implement a snitch line or fan out these secret shoppers to catch these bad actors so you don't have to shut down an entire sector? Well, LA, first of all, I, I, I like the idea. and uh, But in, in saying that, the, the vast majority of these these restaurant owners, they're, they're following the, the protocols. And, and by the way, we've enhanced the inspections. I've talked to the Minister of Labor. He's going to go after the, the very small group of uh, bad actors per se. And, and I, I think the, uh, the people that, that go to these restaurants can pick it off in, in a second. But the vast majority of them are, are just working their backs off. And as I said yesterday, these are, these are people that have thrown everything they, they have and they own into these uh, little family-run restaurants, and and then, and I just I, I just can't without seeing evidence, hardcore evidence, and and people uh, that sit on on the uh, table, the health table. Uh, some are from Toronto; they're across the, the the province, and they haven't been able to see the evidence. I just don't want to target uh, just restaurants for the sake of targeting them. You know, I had a good conversation with. Uh, Mayor Crombie, uh, Mayor Brown, and Mayor Watson, and they're all in 100% agreement uh, with with what uh, we're how we're moving forward. We have to protect protect these people. I'm glad to see the the numbers in Toronto have have gone down again to 200, and I just you can't put people out of work. Tens of thousands of people destroy their lives just like bang that quickly. Just bang, they're they're done. I can't do that. I, I just can't. I, what what we can do together, we can continue to implement uh, guidelines, which we did. Six to a table. Everyone has their contact information. We're closing the restaurants at uh, last last call at 11 o'clock. We've closed down the strip strip clubs. We've made sure the bars aren't open till three in the morning. But these restaurants are amazing people. This is their livelihood. And you go into any restaurant. You, you, you see all the guidelines they've put in place uh, from social distancing to hand sanitizers, to everyone's wearing a mask. These people are just struggling to, to stay alive. And I think all of us know a, a restaurant owner that, that is holding on by their fingernails. Do you, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. Does everyone remember when, when the first, at the beginning of this pandemic, uh, we had some naysayers, and I understand there's always going to be naysayers, from other political uh, parties saying, close down the construction industry, close them down, it's a disaster. Well, we, we 
ramped up the, the inspections. We went after the bad actors. We worked with the, the uh, frontline labor unions and construction, which I absolutely love these, these folks. We worked with the, the companies that were building the towers and so on and so forth. And we saved 500,000 jobs on construction. And there was a handful, a handful of cases right across the country uh, because we all worked together. Just imagine the disaster it would have been if we closed the construction trade, 500,000 people out of work, all the people that were waiting for their homes that couldn't get into their homes. And, you know, we, we made that call with uh, consultation and collaboration with the construction unions, uh, with the local mayors, with the, the builders, the Minister of Labour, Minister of Health, and 500,000 people continued to work and, and they were building homes those same homes that people will be in very shortly so that that, that was the that was the right call and I'm, I'm we just have to protect the small mom and pop restaurants there's tens of thousands of people that work for these uh small businesses too and I, i'm not about to see someone lose their livelihood and and just destroy when i say destroy destroy their lives they, they may own a home they may lose their home they may lose their condo. They may lose everything they have over one decision without seeing proper evidence, data-based evidence. That's all I'm asking for. And right now, I haven't seen it. So that's, that's, that's where we're at. Follow-up? And my follow-up is a question for you, Premier, as well as Minister Elliott, and it's regarding these private clinics that are charging for COVID tests. Uh, the Ministry of Health said yesterday in an emailed statement to our newsroom that it is not permitted and that Ontario Health has been directed to not supply swabs to any practice charging for tests. So on September 22nd, Premier, you were asked about these clinics charging for these tests and said it's a free market but encourage people to go to provincial assessment centres. So has that viewpoint of it being a free market changed for you? And my question for Minister Elliott is, what if a practice gets their own swabs? Will they be permitted to stay open and still provide these tests for a fee, or will the province move in and shut these down? Well, I'm going to pass this over to first the minister and then over to, to Matt Anderson on, on this one. Thank you. Well, it's really important that uh, Ontario Health not be providing swabs to private companies that are going to then charge hundreds of dollars for people to have a test when they can receive a test at no cost to themselves. And we are making those tests more accessible and available by having people make appointments and by increasing our, our testing and lab capabilities. So we really want to uh, make sure that all of the swabs that Ontario Health receives are used for those public health purposes for the people of Ontario and uh, if people if they are able to obtain their own swabs their own, own testing capability fine but I would rather focus our attention on the public capabilities and making sure that we can provide tests to all of the people of Ontario that need them. The other variable here is that some companies are providing testing for their employees uh, at no cost to them and the uh, public companies are buying their own swabs and have their own arrangements for testing. That's fine, but uh, no swabs that are meant for uh, our, our public health campaign should be used for those private purposes. Great, thank you, and thank you for the question. Uh, the only things that I would add is um, that uh, uh, for sure when we look at where our swabs are going, we want them to support um, the public infrastructure. Um, one of the things also to uh, bear in mind is uh, for some folks, uh, I, I, I understand that they may have trouble even with our um, online scheduling. Uh, we do have other options that can be arranged. We do have uh, in the east, we had a program with our paramedics where they would go uh, to a home to do home swabbing if there was somebody who was not able to do it. Uh, and of course, in our vulnerable communities, we still do our mobile testing. So we still want to focus on those things to ensure that everybody gets access. 
The, the only other comment that I would add is that we also um, need to be careful on this notion of where is the test being processed. Um, so when we think about uh, someone charging in that it's a private uh, enterprise, uh, in some instances where it is well organized and, and fully with the support of the Ministry of Health and with Ontario Health, um, uh, the businesses are using um, other non uh, parts of our network um, to do the lab testing. That is not always the case. Um, some are charging and then they're sending the swabs to our labs to be tested, in which case now that is taking away from our public network. Uh, so we fully support the perspective of the Ministry of Health and doing everything we can to, to uh, implement it. Thank you. Next question. Your next question comes from Mike Crawley with CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, Mike. Hi, uh, Premier Ford. Uh, we've seen this data that shows uh, more than a, a positivity rate of more than 10%. Uh, in certain neighborhoods uh, in Toronto, it's, that's an alarmingly high uh, positivity rate. Uh, and these are neighborhoods in which there's a large number of uh, people on low incomes and people yep. of color. And yep. uh, at least one of the neighborhoods is right in your riding. That's right. Have you seen this data? And uh, what should be done to address this issue? Well, I, I did see the data probably about a couple hours ago. They showed me the data, and you're 100% correct. It's in the certain areas, and one being in, in my area. And uh, that's where we, we have to focus on. We, we go out there, we put the mobile testing units up, uh, we get more advertising within those communities, and if it's and no matter if it's uh, the mainstream uh, media or if it's the ethnic media, we're we're still pumping millions and millions of dollars to educate the the people. But I'd, I'd like to hand that over to Dr. Uh, Yaffe if I could. Thank you. Um, I haven't actually seen the data myself. I've read the article uh, in the paper. Um, that is very concerning. Uh, those rates are high and those are neighborhoods uh, and areas that we already knew were at increased risk uh, based on other data so um, in terms of obviously mobile testing clinics increasing access to testing which is already occurring but also uh, we are going to continue to work with Toronto Public Health on how to reach those populations more proactively um, and uh, in addition to all the education, social marketing, and so on, and working with the ethnic media, um, I think the case follow-up there has to be prioritized. Uh, I know that Toronto Public Health has cut back on contact management, but perhaps in those uh, areas, that's an area where it should be um, prioritized as well as the uh, long-term care facilities and other congregate settings, uh, because we have to determine where these people are, are uh, getting their infections and also in terms of offering um, voluntary isolation facilities for cases if they feel that they are in a household where they cannot uh, properly self-isolate, which may be the case in a multi-generational home where they may be quite crowded. So I think there are um, extra strategies that can be and are being uh, implemented and need to be strengthened and we'll continue to work with Toronto Public Health on those. Well, that and uh, back to Premier Ford, uh, back to this question about Thanksgiving. Um, with respect, sir, I think your answers to um, the questions from two different reporters were slightly different. So could you clarify, um, how many people are you going to have over for Thanksgiving? Are you going to have anybody who does not live with you over for Thanksgiving dinner? No. So I, can I confirm that <laughs> when, I, when I call you back, uh, or I'll call you back this afternoon? Uh, to be very frank, uh, I, I, I don't get even a chance to even talk to my family. I'm here till at my office till midnight, but I'll find out the arrangements. All I know is not going to be more than 10. It'll be within our household. And that, that's what I've been telling uh, everyone. We, we have to just stay in our, our, within our households. It, it's about as clear as anything. As I said the other day, just tighten it up. Stay within your households. We can get through this. We can get through this Thanksgiving. I know it might be tough on some people, but we, we will get through this. Okay, this will be the last question. Your final question comes from Ryan Timilti with National Post. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Premier, you've talked about this a little bit before, but I understand that getting a reagent for the Roche uh, testing machines has been a particular challenge for the province. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the, the federal government has a fair supply of um, more generic reagent. I'm wondering if you've, if you've looked at using that, if 
Uh, you have any concerns about having the proprietary system with uh, Roche? Yeah. Before I hand it to Matt Anderson, I, I did have a, a conversation, probably numerous conversations, with Ronnie Miller, uh, the CEO of Roche. I, I know the Deputy uh, uh, Prime Minister had reached out to uh, the overall CEO worldwide in, uh, in, in Germany there. There's a worldwide shortage of uh, reagent, and I'm going to pass it over to Matt because he can explain it a lot better than, than I can. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question, and thank you, Premier. Um, the only things I would add is uh, directly to your question. We call it reagent. Um, that's kind of short form. In fact, what it is is a whole kit. Um, it is proprietary to these particular machines. Uh, these machines are world-class machines. They're they're excellent. Um, the challenge, of course, is that everybody knows that they're world-class machines. Hence, why we are now in a in a global shortage uh, for the entire kit, not just the reagent. So we can't actually substitute it. Um, I can confirm uh, the premier has gotten me on the call uh, with the head of Roche, uh, I believe on a Saturday, I believe again on a Sunday. Uh, he uh, absolutely is, is seized of this. I'm doing everything we can to see if we can get more supply uh, into Canada and into Ontario. Um, and that's sort of where we're at. We're not able to sort of re uh, replace this proprietary uh, kit. Thank you. Paula? Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering too, though, are you considering uh, going with other testing machines that aren't Roche so that you could use some of this uh, generic reagent that um, the federal government seems to have in ample supply. Great. Thank you very much for the question. So short answer is yes. Um, in fact, we've been looking to diversify um, our uh, the, the equipment that are that is on our network. We have um, a little over 120 different analyzers and machines on our network uh, currently. Um, the challenge is it's not quite so easy to say, well, we're just going to move away from these. Uh, they are very high process machines, uh, difficult to meet with uh, uh, other providers. However, we are working with a number of wonderful providers who are looking at getting us some more equipment. Uh, in fact, we're close to bringing on some more equipment from a different vendor, um, probably in the next four weeks or so, four to six weeks, which would bring with it uh, the capabilities in around 25,000 additional tests per day. Um, so we do look at diversifying. I would also add for any of you who have ever worked with a computer system before uh, you know uh, as you've heard all of our team members in the labs are working 24/7 uh, to bring this thing uh, to, to uh, increase capacity and to keep the flow difficult at that time to start to swap out pieces of equipment um, even adding pieces of equipment uh, you recognize that uh, training would be involved in other things so while we're absolutely committed to doing that committed to diversification and committed to bring on uh, more capacity there are some just practical challenges to bringing that on side uh, that we're working through today Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.